I know a young man who just got out of prison again. Every time two roads diverge in a yellow wood, he takes the wrong one. Every time. Now, when he was a young teenager struggling with every bad habit that a young teenage boy can have, I said to his father, we need to get him to EFY. I've worked with that program since 1985. I know the good that it can do. I said, we've got to get him to EFY. Well, his dad says, I can't afford that. I said, I can't afford it either, but you put some in and I'll put some in and then we'll go to my mom because she's a real softie. And, um, <laughs> And we finally got him to EFY. But how long do you think he lasted? Not even a day. By the end of the first day, he called his mother and he said, get me out of here. Heaven will not be heaven for those who have not chosen to be heavenly. In the past, I always had a picture in my mind of what the final judgment would be like. And it always went something like this. Jesus standing there with a the clipboard. Brad standing across the room, nervously looking at Jesus. Jesus looking at his clipboard and saying, Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm Brad, oh, you missed it by two points. <laughs> You know, Brad begging Jesus, please look at the essay question one more time. <laughs> There's got to be two points you can squeeze out of that essay. Now, that's how I always saw it. But as I get older and as I come to a better understanding of the plan of redemption, then the more I realize in the final judgment, it will not be the unrepentant sinner begging Jesus, let me stay, let me stay. No, he will probably be saying, get me out of here. Knowing Christ's character, I believe that if anyone is going to be begging on that occasion, it will probably be Jesus begging the unrepentant sinner, please choose to stay. Please use my atonement, not just to be cleansed, but to be changed so that you want to stay. The miracle of the atonement is not just that we can go home, but that miraculously, we can feel at home. I have born again Christian friends. They ask me, well, have you been saved by grace? And I say, yes, absolutely, totally, completely, thankfully, yes. And then I ask them a question that perhaps they have not fully considered. Have you been changed by grace? They are so excited about being saved that maybe they're not thinking enough about what comes next. They are so happy the debt is paid, they might not have considered why the debt existed in the first place. Latter-day Saints know not only what Jesus has saved us from, but what he has saved us for. The miracle of the atonement is not just that we can live after we die, but that we can live more abundantly. The miracle of the atonement is not just that we can be cleansed and consoled, but that we can be transformed. Scriptures make it clear that no unclean thing can dwell with God, but brothers and sisters, no unchanged thing will even want to.